What's up guys, it's Zoe here and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you guys some of my favorite books as of late and the books that I read last month. Hopefully me sharing with you guys what I've been reading will inspire you to start reading as well and I definitely 110% recommend checking out these books because they are not only amazing but I love them with like every ounce of my being so I'm hoping you guys like them too. I've never really made book videos before but as you know I have gotten into reading a lot since quarantine and I think ever since May I've just been on a roll with reading and up until this month actually this month or this past October I read the most books I have all year. I think I read I have them all here. One, two, three, four, five, six. I read almost 10 books, guys. Like, come on. That, that's crazy. I figured I'd share them with you because all of them are amazing. And I highly recommend you read them because they are some of the best books I've ever read. And that's a lot. Maybe it doesn't. Because I'm not like a book expert, but. Yeah. Um, I love them regardless. And I highly encourage you guys to check them out. But yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so to start this off, I first started the month by reading A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire by Jennifer L. Armentrout. And this is actually the second book to the series. And the first book in the series is From Blood and Ash. Let me just say, if you think Akatar is spicy, you haven't read this book yet, so that's all I'm gonna say. If you like heated passion and all that jazz, like definitely read this book. Like you will not regret putting this, adding this book to your list. Like I honestly, I, this book is how many pages? Let me see, 620 pages. But like don't be intimidated because you will get through this so fast. Like I literally picked it up one day and I finished it in like two days because I, I just couldn't, I couldn't put it down. If you're interested in it, I will read the first, the synopsis of the first book. So basically it's about Poppy and she's a maiden and chosen from birth to usher in a new era, Poppy's life has never been her own. The life of the maiden is solitary, never to be touched, never to be looked upon, never to be spoken to, never to experience pleasure. Waiting for the day of her ascension, she would rather be with the guards, fighting back the evil that took her family, and preparing to be found worthy by the gods. So basically, she is a, like a virgin. No one can touch her. She can't have any intimate relationships with people. And that's all until she meets this guy. He is a guard and he's chosen to guard her after something happens to her first guard and it's like a bunch of like heated passion up there she then has to decide does she choose the path that she's always known she has to take or does she take a leap of faith and just love him i guess and obviously i'm not the best at synopsis -es. This, I think I don't know how to say it, but definitely give this book a shot if you like romance, if you like Avatar and Sarah J. Mass and any of those kinds of books. Highly, highly, highly recommend this book. The second one ends on like such a note, and I'm just like, the third book can't come any faster. Like I need it now, and it's not gonna come now because this book literally just came out like a month ago. Okay, okay. Move on to the next book I read. This is the next book I read. It is Heartless by. Marissa Meyer. Basically, it's a retelling of how Queen of Hearts became the Queen of Hearts uh, in the Alice in Wonderland kind of world. And honestly, it kind of made me see the Queen of Hearts in such a different light. I love fairy tale retellings. In case you can't tell, you will be able to tell by the end of this video. But I, I really like this. It made me really feel for her. And <laughs> the love in this is just immaculate like i cannot tell you uh, i just couldn't it was so good i think what makes this book so good and so enthralling is that you know how it has to end you know she has to end up being a villain by the end of the book because that's who the queen of hearts is in alice in wonderland's story and she starts out as this innocent girl and you just feel for her the whole time and it's so like 
not anxiety inducing but it builds up and it becomes addicting because you are trying to piece together how exactly it all all the puzzle pieces add together to get her to be that villainous character by the end of the book and yeah it's such a treasure it's such a gift and i highly recommend this to anyone honestly all these books were five out of five stars best books i've ever read as of late and yeah highly recommend this book this book i read this one is a super easy read this is so this is love a twisted tale and it is by elizabeth Lim. it is a fairy tale retelling it picks up right when she's at the ball so it kind of skips over the whole like beginning on how like she even gets to the ball and all that kinds of stuff because everyone already kind of knows that it's kind of like the aftermath that is the twisted kind of part and i honestly really liked it it was a very easy read for me not really much to say about this book because it's really straightforward and again it's another fairy tale retelling this one i'm gonna let you guess what kind of book it is okay are you guessing all right do you think it's another fairy tale retelling yes or no Yeah, you're right. It, it is another fairy tale retelling, and it is the fairy tale retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Only my favorite fairy tale ever. I found this one to be very intriguing and very unique in its retelling of Beauty and the Beast. And this book is called A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. And I actually read the first book and the second book. Really liked them both. I my one critique was that I found her writing to be a bit direct. And I think that was me, just me coming from reading Sarah J Maas's books and being so used to it being told objectively that to have it told in like the first person and like hearing the actual character's thoughts and direct like behavior and actions was kind of a little bit for me to get used to again. Overall, I really enjoyed the storytelling of this book. I think the character development and the plot was really good and I really enjoyed how they made Harper, which is the main character, stand out and made her appear very independent and capable of handling herself despite her disorder that she has. She has um, cerebral palsy in the book and I just found it really inspiring how they didn't let, the author did not let that define her character and if anything it made her stronger and I think it's really good to be inclusive. thing to note about these two books was that told from different perspectives. So this first, this first book is told from the perspective of Ren and Harper. And Harper is kind of like Belle and Ren is like the beast. So it's told from their two perspectives. And then the next book is told from two side characters' perspectives that appeared in the first book. Or one of the characters that appeared in the first book is is his point of view in here. Or he's the, one of the main characters in this book. I found this book to be very captivating and again, also super easy to read. I finished this in about two days, I'm pretty sure. And the same thing with the next book. So, so I'm really excited to be sharing with you guys these books because I think this is just like my new favorite series and yeah like I can't I cannot put this book in this series in two words because it's like one of the best series I have ever read and it just makes me I don't have it. Okay, yeah, I'm speechless. Speechless. This series is the Caraval series. I don't know if it's called by another name, but the first book's called Caraval, and it's by Stephanie Garber. And I'm absolutely in love with the plot of this book, of all of the books. For me, in a nutshell, this book. If you play Melanie, Mar if you play Carousel by Melanie Martinez, this is basically the book. It's just like that kind of vibe and i absolutely am in love with it and basically if i read you the synopsis this is what we got here so scarlet dragna has never left the tiny island where she and her sister tella live with their powerful and cruel father now scarlet's father has arranged a marriage for her and scarlet thinks her dreams of seeing carval the far away once a year performance where the audience participates in the show are over but this year, Scarlet's long dreamt of invitation finally arrives. With the help of a mysterious sailor, Tella whisks Scarlet away to the show. Only as soon as they arrive, Tella is kidnapped by Carval's mastermind organizer, Legend. It turns out that this season's Carval revolves around Tella and whoever finds her first is the winner. 
Scarlett has been told that everything that happens during Carball is only an elaborate performance, but she nevertheless becomes embeshed in the game of love, heartbreak, magic with the other players in the game. And whether Carball is real or not, she must find Tella before the five nights of the game are over. There's a bunch of like passion and suspense and all that kinds of stuff. And what I really liked about this series was that it's so unique from everything else I've ever read. And for me, it felt like every time you felt like you were figuring something out or you knew what was going to happen, like it completely flipped and you were like thrown back into like wait what like what was going on and that's what i really loved about this book is i'm the kind of person that when i read books i like it to be like a puzzle like i like to be thrown like pieces to figure out how they all go together and that's what this book did and i absolutely loved it so much and if you can't tell already any book with like romance in it i will pick it up and i will read it because I am that kind of person. Basically had to go get the second book and the second book was told from her sister's perspective. So it was Scarlett's perspective first and then Donatella, which is her sister. It's her perspective. And now I'm reading the third book, which is Finale. And I am in love with it. I started it last night and I'm already over halfway through. So I'm probably gonna finish it today actually but it's just so amazing like i am cannot express how grateful i am that i ever found this series or that i ever thought to pick it up because it has like changed my life like i am in love with it obviously this could get like a million out of 55 baj bajillion stars so yeah it's a yes for me this last book i actually read this book this month i started it at the end of october and i finished it like two days ago i wanted to share it with you anyway it is the night circus by aaron more more genstern it's a really good book as well i give it i mean i think it's worthy of five out of five stars but i would just give it four out of five stars just for my personal preference i didn't it wasn't my style the world and the plot was really cool i just I think this is one of the books where I'd have to reread it in order to better understand all the minor details and the inner workings of the actual plot that was actually taking place in the story. Do the synopsis and I guess you can decide whether or not you'd want to read it yourself. Circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there, when yesterday it was not. Within the black and white striped canvas tents is an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amazements. It's called Le Cirque de Reves or Reves and it is only open at night. But behind the scenes, a fierce competition is underway, a duel between two young magicians, Celia and Marco, who have been trained since childhood expressly for this purpose by their mercurial instructors. Unbeknownst to both of them, this is a game in which only one can be left standing. Amidst the high stakes, Celia and Marco soon tumble headfirst into love, setting off a domino effect of dangerous consequences and leaving the lives of everyone from the performers to the patrons hanging in the balance. So I found this to be, again, really enchanting and intriguing. And after reading it, it's definitely a book I would read again just to understand better. But I again highly recommend this book and i personally really liked it okay guys so that's gonna kind of wrap it up for all the books that i read this month or this past month and going into this month i have another huge list of books that i'm planning on reading but i don't want to make this video too long so i'm not gonna like dump all that on you let's just say one of them has definitely been this book and i'm totally enjoying it and yeah, I'm stop because I'm just like thinking about it as I'm talking about it and I'm just like fangirling in my head about it So we're just gonna like pretend that I didn't talk to kind of wrap it up for this video If you liked it, if you'd like to see more of them Please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments which one of these books you would be most looking forward to reading And if you didn't like it, be sure to give it a thumbs down so I know As a reminder, all of the links to the books will be in the description box in addition to my Goodreads, if you would like to check me out on there and see what books I'm reading, what books I have read, and all the books that I recommend if you want more recommendations from me. So yeah, know that I'm sending lots of love and good vibes to you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.